good afternoon or good morning or good evening whatever time you are watching this show welcome to pastor deborah and friends show yay pastor would you like to say hello hello it's good to have you on this show this afternoon do we have a surprise for you today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of acting and a little bit of narrating a story telling a story about joseph's life in the palace welcome yay So this is Joseph discussing with his executive, uh, talking about how they're going to keep food and make sure that the country has enough food to eat. So everyone is now contributing on how to make sure they have enough food. My children, I heard that there is food in each gypsy all of you we have to go except benjamin benjamin will stay with me at home if we don't go and get food in egypt we will all die so i will give you money to go and buy us some food so we can eat. So I am going to continue our story from Genesis chapter 42. Genesis chapter 42. So Jacob gave money to the 10 boys to go to Egypt to go buy food. Now Joseph was the governor of the land the one who sold grain to all his people. Oh, oh. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down. Oh, hoo, hoo. They bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. As soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. Mm. He recognized them. But he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly actually to them where do you come from who are you what's your name oh from the land of canaan they replied we came to buy food food for who although joseph recognized his brothers they did not recognize him then he remembered his dreams about them and said to them you are spies. You are spies, all of you. You have come to see where our land is unprotected. Guards, get them arrested. No, my lord, they answered. Your servants have come to buy food. We are all the sons of one man. Your servants are honest. Men, not spies. Really? Are they telling the truth? No, they are not telling the truth. They just lied again. Yes, it is true that they are children of one man, but they told a little lie about not including Joseph. No, he said to them, you have come to see where our land is unprotected. But they replied, your servants were 12 brothers. Yes, that's true. The son of one man. Yes, that's true. Who lives in the land of Canaan. Yes, that's also true. The youngest is now with our father. Yes, that's true. And one is no more. Dun, 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 dun. Liars. They didn't know they are talking to the one that they said is no more. Joseph said to them, it is just as I told you. You are spies. And this is how you will be tested. As surely as Pharaoh lives, you will not leave this palace unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of your number to get your brother. 
the rest of you will be kept in prison so that your words may be tested to see if you are telling the truth. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, they are about to be caught. If you are not, then as surely as Pharaoh's leaves, you are spies. And he will put them all in custody for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, Do this and you will live. For I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here in prison. While the rest of you go and take grain back for your starving household. But you must bring back your youngest brother to me. So that your words may be verified and that you may not die. This they proceeded to do. Then said to one another, Surely we have been punished because of our brother. It's about time they confess their sin. We saw how distressed, how sad Joseph was when he pleaded with us for his life. But we would not listen. That is why this distress, this trouble, has come upon us. When someone is begging you to not harm them, do you listen? We're not supposed to hurt one another. When your brother, your sister says, please, I'm sorry, we need to learn to leave them alone. Reuben replied, didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy? But you wouldn't listen. Now we must give an accounting for his blood. They did not realize that Joseph could understand them since he was using an interpreter. Guess what? We better watch what we say when we speak another language. Because you never know who can understand the language we are talking about. He turned away from them and began to weep. Joseph was crying because he was just seeing his brothers after so many years. He, he turned back and spoke to them again. He had Simeon taken from them and bound before their eyes. Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain, to put each man's silver back in his sack, and to give them provisions for their journey. After this was done for them, they loaded their grain on their donkeys and left. At the place where they stopped for the night, one of them opened his sack. Sack means a bag to get feed for his donkey. And he saw his silver in the mouth of the sack. My silver has been returned. He said to his brothers, here it is in my bag. Their hearts sank and they turned to each other trembling and said, what is this that God has done to us? When they came to their father, Jacob in the land of Canaan, they told him all that has happened to them. They said, the man who is the Lord over the land spoke harshly to us and treated us as though we were spying their land. But we said to him, we are honest men. They lied. We are no spies. We were 12 brothers, sons of one father. One is no more. They lied again. And the youngest is now with our father in Canaan. Then the man who is Lord over the land said to us, This is how I will know whether you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me and take food for your starving household and go. But bring your youngest brother to me. I will know that you are not spies, but honest men. Then I will give you your brother back to you, and you can trade in the land. I know spies might be a big word. Spies mean the intelligent, the one who discovers secrets, secret agents. Yeah, secret agents, that's them. 
as they were emptying their sacks. There is each man's sack was his pouch of silver. When they and their father saw the money pouches, they were frightened. Oh, we are in trouble. Their father Jacob said to them, You have deprived me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and now you want to take Benjamin? Everything is against me. No! You will not take Benjamin from me because he's the only one still alive from his mother. Then Reuben said to the father, you may put both of my sons to death if I do not bring him back to you. And trust him to my care. I will take care of Benjamin and I will bring him back to you. But Jacob said, my son will not go down there with you. His brother is dead. Joseph, his brother is dead. And he's the only one left. If harm comes to him on the journey you are taking, you will bring my grave head down to the grave in sorrow. But they said, if we don't go, we will all die. Because no more food, no more water. The only way we can get food is that Benjamin comes with us to Egypt and... We give him to the Lord of the land, which they did not know he was Joseph. And he can give us food. Finally, Jacob said, Okay, take, take Benjamin, my son. Bring him back to me. And please bring him back to me. So the brothers took Benjamin to Egypt with them and they carry lots and lots of gifts. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, take this man to my house, slaughter an animal and prepare dinner. They are to eat with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him and took the men to Joseph's house. Now the men were frightened. When they were taken to his house, they thought we were brought here because of the silver that was put back into our sack the first time. He wants to attack us and overpower us and seize us as slaves and take our donkeys. So they went up to Joseph's steward and spoke to him at the entrance of the house. Please, sir, they said, we came down here the first time to buy food. But at the place where we stopped for the night, we opened our sacks and each of us found his silver. The exact weight in the mouth of his sack. So we have brought it back with us. Guilty. We have also brought additional silver with us to buy food. We don't know who put our silver in our sacks. It's all right, he said. Don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure in your sacks. I received your silver. Then he brought Simeon out to them. The steward took them into Joseph's house gave them water to wash their feet and provide them fodder for their donkeys. They prepared their gifts for Joseph's arrival at noon because they had heard that they were to eat there. When Joseph came home, they presented to him his gifts. They are brought into his house and they bow down the second time. Joseph's dream coming through. Before him to the ground, he asked them how they were. And they said, how is your age, father, you told me about? Is he still living? They replied, your servant, our father, is still alive and well. 
and they bowed low to pay him honor third time. As he looked about and saw his brother Benjamin, his own mother's son, how do you feel when you see your brother or sister after you haven't seen them for a long time? Of course, you will jump. You will say, hey, my sister, my sister, my brother, my brother. He asked, is this your youngest brother? The one you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Because for the first time in a long time, Joseph has just seen his brother, his little baby brother, Benjamin, after a long time. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to weep. He went to his private room and wept there. He cried. His heart was full of joy. Sometimes when we are happy, very happy, sometimes we do cry. We call the cry, cry of joy. After he has washed his face, he came out, controlling himself. He said, serve the food. They served him by himself. The brothers by themselves and the Egyptians who ate with them by themselves because Egyptians could not eat with Hebrews for that is detestable to Egyptians. Now, we must not hate anybody. We must not dis dislike anybody. But the culture of the Egyptians that time did not allow people to eat together. So they had to eat separately. The men had been seated before him in the order of their ages, from the firstborn to the youngest, and they looked at each other in astonishment. When portions were served to them from Joseph's table, Benjamin's portion was five times as much as anyone else. So they feasted and drank freely with him. Wow. After they finish eating with Joseph and his family, it's, the story is getting better. So Joseph said to his servant, I want you to give them all kinds of food that they want and fill their bags with food. But when you get to Benjamin's bag, Guess what? Take my special cup and put it inside Benjamin's bag and make sure they don't see it and they can go and run away with my bag. So, everybody comes, pick up their bags and say, oh, thank you for good lunch, see you. As soon as they were leaving the palace, maybe 10 minutes walk, Joseph's servants from Egypt said, Hey, gentlemen, wait, 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 wait. You thief, you thieves, come, stop, right now. And he said, what have we done? You just fed us. We haven't done anything wrong. No, you did something wrong. You stole the master's special cops. One cup that you took from all the cups. And the master said, come and look and check all, this, all the bags. If we found the master's special cup, whosoever we found his cup in their bag, that person will be taken back to the palace. And then one of the big brothers said, no. None of us is a thief. If you find the cup in our bags, that person, we must kill the person. And the rest of us, we become your slaves. So be it. So one from one bag to another, to another, and to another, then they go to Benjamin's bag. Benjamin stole the cup. Benjamin, 
Why did you steal the king's cup? You know you cannot do this, Benjamin. You cannot do this to us. Oh my goodness. You will be killed by the king. And the rest of us will never see our father again. The servant said, follow me, all of you, to the palace. They got there and they said, Your Highness, we did not know our baby brother stole your cup. Benjamin is saying, No, I did not. I did not steal the cup. But it was found in your bag, Benjamin. Joseph pretended to be very angry, very angry with his brothers. And when he came out, the ten brothers threw themselves in front of Joseph and they were begging. They were begging, but Joseph kept Benjamin to himself. Joseph said to them, what have I done to you people? Don't you know that a man like me can find out everything? What have I done to you? I was good to you, but then you came and you stole my special cup. Then the brother said, what can we say to my Lord? Judah replied, what can we say? How can we prove that we are innocent? God has ex exposed our sin today. We are now your servants, your slaves, we ourselves, and the one who was found to have the cup, you, Benjamin. But Joseph said, Far be it from me to do such a thing. Only the man, the man Benjamin, who was found to have the cup, will become my slave. The rest of you go back to your father in peace. Then Judah said, oh, please, don't do this. My, my father back home will die if I don't bring Benjamin back to him. He's so old. Oh, now please, let me remain in, in your palace as your slave. But please, let Benjamin go back to my father and the rest of my brothers. Oh, I will stay here. I can't go back home without Benjamin giving him back to my father. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants. And he cried out, have everyone leave my presence. Oh, oh, Joseph is about to reveal himself. The moment we've been waiting for, the moment of truth. Let's read it. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. <laughs> I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified. Do, 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 do what? Joseph, Joseph is dead. How can a dead person come back to life? Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they have done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt, the one the businessmen bought years ago. And now, please do not be sad. Do not be angry with yourself for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you, my life and your life. For two years now, there has been famine in the land and the next five years, there will not be plowing nor reaping. Nobody's going to plant any, any gardens. Farming, 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 there will be no food. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you, meaning to make sure you'll be alive for the next seven years. For there'll be no food. 
So God sent me ahead of you so that I can save your life. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me a father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and the ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back. Go bring my father. Go bring everybody. Tell them his son, Joseph, is alive. Benjamin's brother. I'm alive, Benjamin. Good to see you. God made me to be in charge of this country. Don't be delayed. You shall live in region of Goshen near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your flocks, your cattle, and all you have, I'll provide for you there. Because five years of farming are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You have nothing to eat. So you can see for yourself that I am now in a better place right now, in a better position because what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Now let me tell you something. Sometimes when we think we are hurting somebody, when we think we're gonna be bad or make them suffer, we may never know what will happen to them tomorrow. You see, Joseph's brothers were mean to him. They put him in the pit, from the pit to Potiphar's house, from Potiphar's house to prison. They jailed him from prison. God used Joseph's gift and God brought him to the palace. And now he's a prime minister. Why? Because Joseph always always said the truth all the time and God the Bible says and God was with him so what can we learn from the story of Joseph never to be bitter never to be angry to always be kind always forgiving when people hurt us let's forgive them and move on I hope you have enjoyed the story of Joseph today. And Benjamin and Joseph are now brothers for life. Yes, because they are from the same mother. Even though their mother died. But today, they are together. Yes. So, thank you for listening to this story of Joseph. I really appreciate you. Can I ask you a question? Have you been mean to people lately? If you have been mean to your brother or your sister, you have to stop. Because one day, God will expose all the mean, mean things we've done to other people. Have you been good to people lately? I want to say kudos to you. You continue to be good. You continue to be nice. And one day, God is going to reward you. Let's be good all the time. And this is the end of the story of Joseph. Hey, I'll see you again next week, sometimes, the same time, in the same place, between now and then. Be cool, be smart, enjoy summer, wash your hands, put up your mask when you go out, and clean up your room, and eat your vegetables, and Help mommy in the kitchen and say please and thank you and be polite to everybody you come a a across. I just want to tell you one more time, just in case if you don't know, that you are so beautiful. You are so handsome. You are gorgeous. You are fantastic. You are fabulous. Jesus loves you. You are the best thing that could ever happen in the hand of God because he created you. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.